Hey everyone, so um, I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. This is only an account from my perspective of the history of the Alafuckin family, who we were, who we are, who we're going to be. Um, okay, so I guess to start, it started off on my perspective with my first son, Johnny. Johnny was the one that inspired me to be a gay father. He's the one that inspired me to um, kind of like start getting this mindset of becoming a leader and a role model and an advocate within the LGBTQ community. Um, my best friend for over six, seven years already has been Mikey. Mikey's my brother, my ride or die, my everything, my better half. He was there through it all. And he's the one that introduced me to Esteban, who I became really close to immediately the moment I met him. Me and him have been through trial and error, and it only made us stronger. I feel that when we all met and we all started talking about this whole gay family thing, at the time there were no families like ours. I mean, you guys have to understand that back in late 2010, in my generation, everybody chilled at either Esco's on a Saturday before it got too ratchet, or we used to chill at the house parties. And the house parties were run by DJ Sammy Blends and Porn Star Entertainment and you know, um, Robo Squad and all of them, DJ Mohawk and the Mohawk Twins. We had a really good fucking time back then, and we used to be rolling deep there every Friday and Saturday at actual houses. Like, they weren't always at apartments. I'm talking about, um, that's what kind of led us to always hang out with each other and grow this friendship with one another. One thing led to another, and January 26, 2011, we all founded this family. Me, Esteban, and Mikey being the three prodigy brothers, the three founders, we started the Alafuke family. Um, the original members of the Alafuke family are me, Mikey, Esteban, Nelson, who's my son, um, Johnny's my son, then Chris Figueroa is Mikey's son, and Esteban's kid is Angel Melendez, and then his kid, who was our first grandkid in the family, is Felix Santiago. So it was about seven or eight of us there. Um, along the way came Alizé and Casper, who joined and became our other two Alafuki overalls, being the five of, you know, so that it could be five overalls altogether to kind of like balance things out for majority rule purposes, helping run the family. Okay, so. Um, during the entire 2011 spring-summer season, it was all about getting to know each other and growing our family. There was a lot of reluctance, but along the way we met a lot of beautiful people that joined our family and are still with us today. Um, the Alafuckets were a huge part of the Rouge Empire, which had been founded in March 30th, or March 31st is one of those dates, but, um, ever since the Rouges had been founded, I was, at the time, Jamaica Rouges' son and prodigy prince of the Rouge Empire. When I introduced the Rouges to the Alofuckets, the Alofuckets became the first subdivision of the Rouge Empire. So we had that beautiful connection going on, and it was through Jamaica that I learned a lot about what it meant to be a public figure, have class and image, principle over personality, you know, um, to be a, a better parent through experience and stuff like that. Um, so we had a beautiful thing going on with them, and it was a beautiful connection. We all learned from one another to spend time together. We took trips to D.C. D.C. came to New York. It was just a wonderful um, trial and error part of the foundation of our family because we learned a lot along the way. Anyways, at the end of the summertime... Oh, and mind you... A lot of historical events in the family happened during that time because the Alafuckets went to Queen's Pride together. The Alafuckets went to New York City Gay Pride together. You know, um, we stopped going to as many house parties, but the house parties we did go to, the Alafuckets got their life. And again, this was something that it was like new to us because we weren't used to this local fame and celebrity scene. Oh my God, there's a mosquito. Anyways. Um... January 27th is my birthday, and I had turned 21. Um, through Jamaica, I had met... No, 
Through other people in my life, I met Stephen Monroe, who was my second gay father, because I had chopped my first gay father, long story, no one's business. Um, Stephen helped my sister, Casper, and, a, and my brother, Mikey, and them um, surprise me for my birthday. And everyone was there, and it was so much fucking fun. I will never forget it. And it was a week after that that I asked Stephen to be my gay father. Um, it was also around that time that Jamaica came back to New York City to visit, and it was like the last time she ever visited, like, for uh, many months afterwards in New York City. So we all spent time together, and a little bit afterwards, Jamaica and I had a conversation, and I related back to the Alafuckets, and we were talking about who we were going to really have as family, who's going to, like, what does it mean to be family, our families are growing too big, this and that and the third. Um, the Alafuckets decided in our last meeting in mid-August, since everybody was going to work, school and all that, to close the doors. Now, this was a big move because, you know, for us to be a family and to say that we're closing the doors, it was to say, that no matter what, until we reopen the doors, January 26th, the one year anniversary, for those four or five months, we were not going to make any new people a part of our Alafuckin family, even our kids. So it was a very big step for us. But we all agreed to it and felt that we could use the fall winter season as time to get to know each other better and strengthen our bonds. So while the doors were closed, I was more involved with the Rouges, and I was Prodigy Prince of the Empire, and I was also Stephen's son, and I had that relationship with him where I was kind of like his, you know, his ride or die and his second in command with the House of Amara. Um, so I was always doing a lot of stuff running around you know, being a leader and learning about being a leader at the same time. And I was getting a lot of different perspectives on what it was to be a gay father because I was a gay son from many different perspectives as well. Um, November came and the Alafuckets went to SUNY Purchase where we saw my sister Tressa Mae Darling perform for the first time at Fall Ball. We slept over. It was an incredible time. Another beautiful event in Alafuckets history. In December, um, we all participated in this event called Fashion Fighting AIDS at El Morocco Nightclub. It was the first time we ever had been a part of it. And since we needed a minimum of, I think, like 12 people to walk with us that year, the Rouges, Amaras, it was the Rouge Empire, the House of Amara, the Alofake family, and the House of Atan. We all came together as one family and we walked. Um, in the name of, you know, fighting HIV, AIDS awareness and research, right? Um, actually, you know, that was the last time that a lot of us were able to see my late aunt, Amil Hudgens Vatan Rouge, who passed away. God bless her soul. And that was, a, that was the last time that I can honestly remember all the families coming together and spending such a positive time together before a lot of drama ended up coming out of that. And it's a time that I'll never forget. It really became a part of who we are as people and the bonds that we have to this day. Um, the reason why I bring it up is because a little bit afterwards, around the Christmas time, everybody was coming from winter vacation, you know, people from college, work and all that stuff. And we were spending a lot of time in Steven's house, you know, um, a lot, a lot of time there. That was the hangout spot for all the family members at the time. And we would have parties there, Kiki, that's where all the drama would get squashed, is where all the drama would start. It was an epic place. Um, that was around the same time that I became Emperor of the Rouge Empire because Jamaica had been MIA going through a personal crisis at the time. Um, a lot of shit went down and it was very stressful. And the Alafuckets were a part of it all because of me. I was a very big part of, you know, the Rouge Empire having been the emperor and before that the prodigy prince. So I kind of brought with that <clears throat> the Alafuckets as the foundation to keep my back and keep me going with the Rouges because, you know, we were so right or die. We all did shit together no matter what. <clears throat> Unfortunately, because of concerns things that just were out of my control and that are none of your business. I left the Rouge Empire. Jamaica was still my mom at the time. And I started Regulus. 
I started Regulus because I felt that I wanted to have a name that I made myself, that no one shared with me. It was my reputation, my foundation, all of that. That's when my name finally became Raphael fucking Regulus. Um, the Alafuckets got involved with that because I was around the same time that the Alafuckets reopened their doors for the one-year anniversary. And that's when we started adding more people. But at the same time, that's when the Alafuckets started being more reluctant and saying, who are we going to make family? Because we don't want people to abuse our name and all that. We don't want to have people from other families come and start spying in our family. And that was a big issue we were having. Because the moment that I stopped being a Rouge, a lot of Alafuckets walked out. And then the Alafuckets that were still Rouges started talking back and forth. And the Rouges were doing the same thing. So that's when a lot of conflict happened. Um, but, you know, we still kept the cue for what it was. So um, highlights, lowlights, let's just bullet point it because I know y'all don't want to hear all the details because honestly it's none of your business at the end of the day. Um, I had more kids. Esteban had more kids. The Alafuckets grew deep. And, you know, it was like maybe 30 of us by the time it was... February, March. Now, one of the kids that I had at the time was David, and he was one that was a huge inspiration in my life because I had just left the Rouges. So when I had left the Rouges, I felt this gap in me of being a leader because when I led in the Alla Fuck it, I shared that leadership with four other people, you know, the overalls. Um, so I decided to want to start my own thing. That's why I came up with Regulus. Regulus was going to be my own entity, my own group. I wanted Regulus to be something that would transform the entire community. It would be my legacy. Along the way that changed, but I digress as a different story. David wanted to start his own family because he was inspired by everything that was going on. So I helped him found what became the Arrow family. Along that same time, I ended up meeting a new friend of mine who you all know as Daniel Martinez, a.k.a. Phoenix. And it was through him that I met a lot of people at that time who saved me from a lot of kind of like loneliness because a lot of my other fuckers were going back to school and college by then. And I was working most of the time. So, you know, we both met at times where we needed each other, and I was really happy to find a new brother and best friend in Phoenix. So he had his Auroras, and he founded it, and he asked me to help him out with that, and I did. And I became emperor of the Aurora Empire, well, the Aurora Dynasty, uh, yep, the Aurora Dynasty, and he was the overall father. So we really worked hand in hand. Um, so it was pretty much like Jamaica was my mom. I had the Alafuckit family, I was Emperor of the Auroras, and then I had my son starting the Arrow family that I pretty much helped him, well I helped him, I found, but I also helped him kind of like run it on his own and stuff. So I had a lot of stuff going on and I was giving back to the community and I loved it. Um, things happened, uh, yet again, no one's business, no longer in Aurora, left the Arrows, wanted nothing to do with the Rouges, and I ended up finally committing to strictly being Alla Fuck It Down and working more on me and my kids and my family. So, um, let's say, let's skip it to possibly Gay Pride that year. Gay Pride of 2012 was a big moment for us because we walked yet again with half and we all walked together and we had people from different families walking with us and that was really cool and we had a epic epic summer because the whole summer was just mad love we had the house parties we threw our own parties we had you know the picnic events we did so much and it was so much fun you know um i was always showing face at Morocco's, and i started going to little boy because i had you know i was feeling it and i started getting my name more out there and i met a lot of people in the scene that i really respected um when it was time for my Oh, yep. Actually, it was in the summertime. That's when I started working at Boom Boom Bar with Jovio Entertainment. And that's when the Alafuckets started 
coming with me for support. And because I was working there as a co-manager, so to speak, and a promoter, I was able to get my sister trusted me bookings there. And I was able to get um, other family members bookings there. And I, we had a great time for what it was, you know? I mean, seriously, every, like, Thursday night at... Um, Boom Boom Bar was everything for us. We always made it a la fuck it party and it was unbelievable. Um, around my birthday, that's when I found out that my Aunt Amil Hudgens Vatan Rouge had passed away. And that was like, to this day, it still brings me to fight back tears. Like, Amil was the first person in the family scene to pass away on us and it was no joke i mean it just made me and a lot of people in the family kind of reconsider what it really means to be family and just how much dedication we put into this and what it really means to have the bonds that we've shared it was because of her death that i ended up rekindling my relationship with jamaica rouge at the time and i tried rekindling the relationship that I had with the other families, me having been always the so-called ambassador of the Alafaki family, you know? I was the one with the most ability to reach out to the other families, having been in them all. So I was always the one who was more responsible to trying to build that connection and friendship and relationship. Okay, so let's be honest. Unfortunately, that never worked out. But, you know, principle over personality and everyone's in it for themselves. I respect that. At the end of the day, everyone that's in a family is out for their own family. That's why I've always said from pure experience that if you're in a family, you shouldn't be in two families at the same time because they always bump heads. Family should be family down the end, you know? Because, ugh, Jesus Christ, the drama. But I digress. I feel that life is like a photograph you develop from the negatives. And the Alofake family has been through a lot of negatives. I mean, this year alone, at the end of the summertime, the Alofakets ended the summer by going to this house party. And leaving the house party, we ended up getting bashed by a bunch of drunk gay Dom um, Dominicans that knew that there was a gay house party going on. And the moment that we stepped out, they jumped in. And one of them tried going after my son Cairo, and I literally forced myself in front of Cairo and got sucker punched. And, you know, Esteban was defending his kids and he ended up getting pushed and scraped his knee. You know, it was very scary for us. That was like, to this day, I still think that was the most traumatic experience we ever had as a family. And the Alapakets who were there that night, we still hold on to that strong to this day. Because that's the moment that we started getting this mentality of, yo, family is the people who shoot in the gym with you. And mind you, that doesn't even, that, like, that's only the icing on the cake. Because you, you guys have to remember that we've been through a lot of shit in the past one and a half years by that point. Like, even a little bit earlier on, in like May or June, we had this drama at the pier where we found out that some of our kids got in a big fight with a bunch of idiots over there. And we all came from left and right. We had, you know, my sister Cynthia and Stephanie coming down from upstate and had my cousin Stephanie coming from Long Island and shit. And we all rolled deep to Christopher Street to make sure that our kids were safe. You know, um... We made sure everyone got on the train home, that everyone calmed down, that no one needed to go to the hospital. There was an altercation with three or four people that were involved with the fight, but we were able to break it off and shit. You know, um, we've been through a lot as a family, you know? Like, you guys, like, I could sit here forever and talk about the events that's happened that's made us go through it. But what makes the Alo Fucking family so damn strong is that no matter what was thrown at us, we always somehow made it through. Even if we lost people along the way and even if other families want to look down at us or they don't want to be thankful for the fact that we even helped them start their own families one point or other, you know what? Let it be. We, ha I, I personally have this mentality of, you know what? I'm really thankful for the time that the Alo Fuckets family and I spent with other families because we left our mark, you know, and it was through the suffering that we became stronger and we became closer. And look at where the family's at now. I mean, most of us got jobs, good jobs, real jobs, 
you know? The ones who aren't working are in college, you know? Um, Tresemme Daling won Fall Ball at SUNY Purchase this year, and that was a big event because all the alafuckets rolled deep, and we went to support her, and that was beautiful, you know? Um, my niece, Valerie, she got her own apartment, and... She's doing what she gotta do to get her life together and it's been nothing but a blessing to her and the Hollow Fucking family because she opened her doors to us and we had a lot of time there to practice for this year's Fashion Fighting Aids where the Hollow Fucking family actually walked. Mind you, we were the only family to walk this year. You know, and we did it. In the name of Emil, we did it. And I'll never forget that experience. Mind you... You know, the last event that we all did was the Fashion Fighting AIDS event. And it was not easy. Like, shit. You think that we went through shit with the gay bashing and the, and the jumping at the pier and all the other families with the drama and the bullshit? Oh my god, don't get me started with Fashion Fighting AIDS. Everything that could have happened to us backstage happens. Someone used our music. Someone almost had our outfit theme. Like... People were missing shit left and right. There was a stolen iPod. There was there was just so much fucking drama. Mind you, the Isle of Fuckets and I, I was directing it. And I was choreographing it with Esteban having my back through it all, helping me direct and choreograph. And he was the one that came up with the music. We came up with this huge choreography. We were ready for a production y todo. To find out the same damn night that they had already chosen the way that we were going to walk on the runway. And they had already chosen... Like, how long we had and all this shit. So, we were totally out of it. We had to do that whole walk from scratch and had less than two hours to figure out how we were going to do it. With the poses y todo. Because everything we had rehearsed for, we weren't able to do any longer. It wasn't like last year where the runway was just straightforward. This time it was this whole square runway with the stapled down fabric runway that we kept tripping on and all that but yo you guys see the video and the family ate it like no matter what drama came thrown at us we fucking killed it and we burned the runway and we had so much fun um that pretty much goes to show you that our family is staying strong and yeah we have our drama left and right and no my family is not perfect but the history of the Allah fucking family is rich and what's kept us going is this one question. What does Allah fuck it mean to you? You see, when the Allah fuck it first started, we came up with the Allah fuck it name because we felt that Allah fuck it was this Dominican slang word that said, fuck what other people think. We're going to do for us. And unlike the families we were born in, we're going to choose to be a part of this family and we're going to make each other this family the way we want it to be. It was all for one, one for all. You know, very ride or die, shoe in the Jimmy Tolo. We were always like that and we always will be. Now, some perspective events that are coming soon for the family, well, we're about to make two years and no other family could say that because at the end of the day, we were the first. You know, we're the ones always trans transcending the bar. We're always the ones breaking the boundaries, you know? Mind you, there's like 50 of us now, so we're definitely the largest family that's in the scene when it comes to the gay families down. Um, and there's a lot of us that have made names for ourselves in the process. I honestly think that the same family I have today, I'm not gonna have by 2012. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of changes are happening because of the simple fact that life goes on, life changes, um, life gets in the way. But I'm ready for it because no matter what happens, the Allah fuck it's are going to be here forever. Um, we're going to make a difference. We've already made a difference in the scene and we're going to keep making a difference in the gay community. As long as there's one kid out there that says, I want you to be my father, I'm going to take him in. And I'm going to be that role model and I'm going to teach him this story. And I'm going to teach him through all the experiences that not only I've been through, but the other 49 people have been through. Because it takes a village to raise a child. You know, um, when a lot of us came out the closet, we didn't have role models and father figures. And some of us older ones that did have gay parents, we didn't have the luxury of having good ones or ones that connected with us to the point of infinity. I digress. I'm blessed today to say that I have a beautiful mother in Chanel International, Lopez Dolce Vida. You know, um, I still have a beautiful relationship with my ex-father, Stephen Monroe. I'm still cool with my first ex-father, Bebo Rivera. 
I'm right now a proud father of eight kids. Um, most of my kids are in college, so you don't even see them around. I'm really proud of where the family has gotten to today, you know, um, literally, like, it's not just my kids, but, you know, Esteban's Darling family, which is, like, a sub-family within the Alafucker family, the same way that my Regulus is a sub-family within the family, like, the Darlings are strong performers and and they're future role models and they're in school and they're, they're like, reaching for their dreams, like, I mean, come on, seriously, with someone like Esteban there to guide them, how could you expect them to fail? And mind you, their foundation is Alofuke. And as long as you have Alofuke as a foundation, there is no way that you will ever be able to fall. Because, honey, we've been to the lowest points. We know how to get out of them very quickly. You know? Um, a lot of the Alofuke family members are in college. Most of us are working. There's a 100% high school graduation rate, and that's something that we stress on because we refuse to take in kids that don't put high school as a priority, especially when it comes to higher education. A lot of us are working with nonprofit organizations such as Bronx Aid Services, Hispanic AIDS Forum, and others um, in the community. Um, we're all making names for ourselves, you know? We all have dreams and aspirations. The family's not perfect. The Alofuckets do get involved with drama sometimes. Shay gets thrown. Shit happens. But, you know what? At the end of the day, what makes us strong and what makes us survive is the fact that through the negativity, we develop. No matter what's thrown at us, we stick together. Sometimes the drama is as easy as deleting one person from our lives and labeling them irrelevant. It's not to disrespect anyone, but it's to simply say, that's our foundation. Ever since day one, we've said Alo fuck it means if you do not carry the name, if you don't have the bond that Alo fuck it brings and you don't respect that bond, then you have no purpose in our life. Because as long as I have the Alo fuck it, I don't need anybody else. You know, that's what the Alo fuck it's are. We're a team. We're, we're stronger than a family. We're, we're everything, we're literally everything to each other. Not all the alafuckets see it that way, but remember at the end of the day, this is my video, so I'm speaking on my own behalf. But the fact of the matter is, life will be so much different if alafucket never existed. Mind you, a lot of other families wouldn't be where they're at if it wasn't for alafucket there to inspire them. A lot of people wouldn't be where they're at if it wasn't for the Allah fucking individuals and being a part of their lives. So as far as I see it, if this is how much history and how much of an impact the Allah fucking family has made within the LGBTQ community, imagine where we're going to be at in three years, five years, ten years. We want to be in a place where we can honestly say that we founded a new subculture within the community where we made an actual gay family scene. You know, outside of the Kiki ballroom scene and the mainstream ballroom scene with the houses. We want to actually found this scene where gay families are real families with real parents who are real role models, whether positive or negative, because different families have different agendas. But the main purpose of what it means to be a gay family is um, you get out of the family what you put into it. It's all about sacrifice and investment. You know, um, family above all, family first. You know, we teach our kids, you know, always invest in your family, invest in your bonds, in your relationships, in your brothers, in your sisters, in your father, and your kids, you know, because that should always be your foundation, your home, your roots. Um, we tell the kids no incest in the family because, yeah, we do have our relationships here and there. But when we teach our kids in a group of 30 sexy guys, they're your brother. Respect them as that. We teach our kids restraint. We teach them to respect. That way, the next time they go to a house party and they meet someone, they don't jump into bed with them. They say, let me respect myself. Let me think before I get in a relationship with someone and make a fool of myself or a scandal. So, yeah, there are times when family members date each other. 
But we keep it very discreet and we keep it respectful because the kids respect themselves, they respect each other, and they respect the family. And that's what family is all about. Well, pretty much that's it for me. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what the Isle fucking family history is all about. We went through shit, we got over it. <laughs> you know? Um, it's been hard, but it's been a blessing. There's been a lot of dinners, a lot of house parties, a lot of hanging out at the pier, a lot of visits to colleges, um, a lot of college applications and scholarships and performances, club nights, bookings, movie nights, pajama parties. Don't get me started on the fact that, you know, hint, hint, elbow, elbow, nudge, nudge. For the second year anniversary, we're trying to have an award ceremony or a party or some shit like that. You know, we're going to do something huge. And this is only the beginning. Anyone who actually took the time to see this, Thank you, because I feel that if, if there was a way for me to get all the alafuckers together to help me improve this video so we could all be there for each other, I promise you I'll make a mini movie, a mini documentary, and we'll all just sit down and we'll talk about it and make it look more live. For now, all I got is me, myself, and my webcam, so I'm sorry if it was a little bit boring. Again, thank you so much to everyone who wanted to listen. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, quotes, jokes, rants, tweets, or whatever, come to me personally. I do not take anything offensive. All I ask is that you guys remember that anything I said did not come out of shade. It's all fact. Honey, get over it. The past is the past. The same way that Americans have to teach their kids every year that we lost the fucking Korean War and that the British were shady and we had to revolutionize against them. The same way that all the other families could get off their high horse and respect the fact that it happened. It's history. We were first. Get over it. Get over it. All the families have their own agendas. They have their own principles. We have our own principles. I feel that if we all learn to respect that, there'll be no need for instigation, drama, shade, negativity, any of that. Who knows? Maybe next year at Fashion Fighting AIDS, we can all come together as a family again, united, and do something in the name of a mill yet again. Who knows? I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring me, but for now, I do know that my heart still bleeds out of fuck it and beats it down. So, again, thank you everyone who's listening. And who's been watching this, God bless you all. Thank you.